It's a weird time to be thinking about the future of mobile at a time when many of us are less mobile than ever before. Nevertheless, here we are with the newly launched Android 11, arriving today on Pixel phones and some other models from Xiaomi, Oppo and OnePlus. This is the face of Android in 2021, with new chat capabilities, improved permissions and better support for new technologies like 5G and foldables. Take a sec to subscribe to Android Central here on YouTube so you don't miss our coverage of Google's new 5G Pixels coming soon, and we'll jump into our review of Android 11. So, most of us juggle a lot of messages from a bunch of different apps throughout the day, and Android 11 wants to make that easier. Chat notifications now live in this new conversations area at the top of the notification shade, and spacing here has been increased to make for a clearer distinction between conversations, regular notifications, and silent notifications. The new notification history feature, which is optional and turned off by default, lets you keep track of incoming alerts and scroll back through time to find anything you might have missed. Plus, in Android 11, it's now possible to paste images directly into the notification text box in apps that support image copy-paste. But the biggest change to messaging in Android 11 is chat bubbles. This feature has been a long time coming, first appearing way back in the Android 10 beta, but it's now finally rolling out with Android 11. And basically this is Facebook's chat heads, but for every messaging app. At least those of which have been updated to Android 11 to support it. So Bubbles, as the name suggests, lets you turn your chat notifications into a floating bubble, which you can then fling around the screen and open up this compact version of your chat window. It's a really handy way to be able to hop in and out of a conversation while you're doing other stuff in the background. But like any other new feature that relies on app developers, you may need to wait for some of your apps to be updated to fully take advantage of chat bubbles. The way you control music, podcasts, and video apps in Android is also getting a major overhaul in this new version. Instead of using a persistent notification, Android 11's media controls now live in the quick settings area up top. You get the same playback controls as before, only with less visual clutter. So from here you can swipe these away or toggle through them if you have a few different media apps open at the same time. You can always find media controls in the quick settings area even after you dismiss them, though in the settings it is possible to have them disappear for good once you've finished listening. Definitely takes a bit of getting used to since this is kind of a notification but also kind of not a notification, but as far as decluttering the notification shade goes, it's probably a good thing. Permissions got a big overhaul in Android 10, and there are more changes in Android 11 to help you keep tabs on what apps are allowed to do. Now you can give apps one-time access to sensitive permissions like location and camera, so you don't need to dig in the settings and revoke them later. Plus, you can have Android automatically revoke permissions if an app hasn't been used for a while. So in both cases, sneaky apps can't take advantage of a permission granted once to do whatever they want indefinitely. That's especially important for things like location and camera. And speaking of photography, Android 11 has new APIs for camera apps to be able to silence the phone while shooting photos and videos. So if you've ever been annoyed by a blurry photo caused by a vibrating notification, or a video upset by an incoming notification chime, you'll definitely appreciate this change. And although we're not travelling anywhere near as much as in pre-Covid times, Android 11 does have one neat feature change that'll make future flying a little bit less annoying. Now, when you're connected to Bluetooth headphones, activating AirPlay mode will keep Bluetooth active, as opposed to disabling it alongside your Wi-Fi and cellular connections. It's a great way to ensure you're not left fumbling around with Bluetooth settings as you're waiting to take off. And when you arrive at your destination, Android 11 might also help there too. Digital ID support is coming to Android starting with version 11, with initial support for ID documents such as driver's licenses. Obviously it's going to take a long time for this to gain traction, but nevertheless, Android 11 comes with this future-proofing feature. Meanwhile, 5G foldables and fast refresh rates are some of the most exciting trends in mobile right now, and Android 11 comes with new features for all these new technologies. The new version has new APIs to help detect a 5G connection and estimate its available bandwidth without wasting data on a speed test. These new APIs can also detect unmetered 5G connections, so if you don't have any data caps, your Android 11 apps will be able to know this. That means if you've got super fast and limited 5G at your disposal, apps can take full advantage of this, and if things are a bit more constrictive, then apps can scale back accordingly. On the foldable side, we're seeing features already shipping in the Galaxy Z Fold 2, incorporated as part of the Android 11 OS. The new Hinge Angle Sensor API can enable special features when foldable phones are partially opened, letting them adapt to these folding screens however they're being used, and enable features that make sense when the screen is split in half like this. Plus, apps can now specify an ideal refresh rate with new refresh rate APIs in Android 11. This lets them choose between higher refresh rates like 90 or 120 Hz for smoother performance, or lower speeds like 60 Hz for improved battery longevity. 
And if you're using a good old fashioned flat phone, Android 11 also brings new capabilities to waterfall displays and hole punches, letting apps know where cutouts exist and letting them more intelligently handle the extra space around the sides of phones like the Motorola Edge and Huawei Mate 30 Pro with screens that flow over the sides of the device. There have also been a few improvements to features introduced in earlier versions of Android, like gesture navigation and picture-in-picture -picture video. Android 11 lets you set independent sensitivity levels for the back swipe gestures on the left and right sides of the display, which is pretty useful if you find that gesture interfering with controls on just one side of the phone. As for picture-in-picture, -picture, it's finally possible to change the size of that floating video window for a wider view, or for less clutter over the top of your background apps. Call screening has been part of Google's phone since the Pixel 3, but now Android 11 is introducing new APIs to help block robocalls and spam more intelligently. Android 11 will let apps verify a call's stir or shaken status, which is part of standards to counteract spoofing. Apps are also able to record a reason for call being rejected, as well as details of whether the caller was in your contact list or not. Android's biometric chops are also being enhanced too, with new APIs to specify the strength of a particular biometric unlock method. For example, a simple 2D face unlock from a front-facing camera might be considered weak and okay for unlocking your phone but not for payments, and meanwhile a fingerprint scan or 3D face unlock would be more secure and therefore okay for things like Google Pay. Speaking of which, Android's power menu has been overhauled, not only including the Google Pay integration for Pixel phones that we saw earlier in the year, but also smart home controls. The new control panel in the lower portion of the screen lets you control devices connected through the Google Home app, such as Chromecast targets or smart light bulbs, so it's really great to have these quick controls if you're already invested in a lot of smart home gear. There are plenty of under the hood changes too. Android 11 fully enables scoped storage, which again has been a long time coming. It gives apps targeting Android 11 their own sandbox of device storage, as opposed to giving them universal access to the entirety of your phone's storage. This is one of those changes that's necessary for security, but does have the potential to break some stuff. So Google says this will only be enabled for apps targeting Android 11, which gives developers plenty of time to make sure their apps work nicely with this new feature. Screenshots and screen recording have also received plenty of attention in Android 11. There's a new UI for taking, editing and sharing screenshots in the latest version, and native screen recording has also finally come to Android, with the option to pull in device audio, audio from your onboard microphone, or even voiceover from a mic connected over USB. And once you update your phone on Android 11, the new Resume from Boot feature will let you authorize your phone to reboot and immediately unlock if you wanted to, as opposed to waiting around to enter your PIN or fingerprint before apps can start notifying you. Probably not going to be something you appreciate every day, but it's a thoughtful touch nonetheless. As with any Android release, there are some Google Pixel specific changes too. And in Android 11, the recent apps menu has been updated with the secondary screenshot button, as well as the option to select text in apps that support it for easy copy pasting. Pretty useful for apps like Instagram that don't necessarily allow easy direct copy pasting of text. And bring the Pixel UI in line with many other Android 10 phones, it's now possible to set a custom time for dark mode in Pixels on Android 11. That's as opposed to just having it turn on automatically from sunrise to sunset. The Pixel Launcher has also been updated with a new smart app prediction feature in the favorites tray. In Android 11, if you don't pin an app down there, Google will automatically fill out each blank spot with a predicted app option based on your own usage. And for me, the favorites tray is more about predictability and muscle memory than anything else, so this isn't a feature I've really been using all that much, but if you prefer a more freeform home screen, you may find it useful. And the Pixel UI now has a bunch of new icon cutout shapes if you're into customization. Finally, a new Android version wouldn't be complete without new emoji. There are 117 new emoji in the latest version, with broader representation and new animals being among the additions. And the emoji themselves have also been tweaked with more of a gradient effect in certain faces and more primary colors thrown into the mix. So Android 11 isn't a massive overhaul, and perhaps with the way things are right now, it doesn't need to be. But it does target plenty of common mobile pain points, while also offering a sensible take on things like managing conversations, streaming media, and improving on the permission changes brought in in Android 10. This is the version of Android that we'll see on new phones in 2021 and beyond. But starting today, Android 11 is coming to Google's Pixel phones, as well as certain models from Oppo, OnePlus, and Xiaomi. Hit the comments to let us know what you think of Android 11, and subscribe so you don't miss our Google Pixel 5 coverage starting soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.